Hey everybody, check this out. Check this out. Now you may ask yourself, why am I showing you a magazine from the 1940s? Well, this is Look Magazine from February 27th, 1940. And um, if you can look very carefully at that little title right there. Who is this celebrity? Rita Hayworth. Okay. All right. It's all good. But as it says right there, if you can see, Superman captures Hitler and Stalin. That's exactly what that title implies. Um, now, Look Magazine, uh, a little uh, a small history on it. Now, this was a magazine that uh, kind of rivaled Life Magazine back in the day. And went out of business, I believe, in the early '70s. And um, man, this is this is really cool. It's it's it, to me, it's a really cool time capsule of the uh, time period and how America was in the 1940s. Not you, not a total time capsule of everything that went on in America, but you know, you get you get a good idea of what was going on. Check this out. That's cool, isn't it? That's really cool. But again, I mentioned Superman. And here we go. Look at that. A small little uh, article on the crea on Superman and its creators, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster. Plus, uh, this is the coolest part. A Superman story. A never-before-seen Superman story. Not a reprint from a previous Action Comics or Superman issue, but a very... Um, an original Superman story created especially for Look Magazine. All right. This is uh, a... Pre First off, it's a Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster story. Um, Pre-war... Pre-America's uh, involvement in World War II. By at least... Uh, a cup by, by the better part of two years. Uh, Superman had only been in existence for two years... I mean, this thing is, uh, this is awesome. Check, look at it. Just look at it. I keep saying check this out, but I can't help it. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. This is so cool. You know, it's a, you know, it's a short two-page story, but to me, that's enough. That's more than enough. Look at that. Look at that. And also, like I said, a nice little time capsule and snapshot of America at that time cool article on Joe Lu on Joe Lewis the boxer. Mm, this is so nice. I mean on top of the Superman story, you have all these cool articles to boot, you know. More Rita Hayworth. Oh, but again, the Superman story is uh what I bought this for. Now, I was at a store a couple of weeks ago. I saw the book, I saw the magazine up on the rack, and um, and I asked the guy, why is that up there? And he pulls he pulls out the pulls down the magazine, opens up to this story and to the article on Superman, and I'm just like totally blown away by it. And like I said, you know, early 1940s. I mean, this is a golden age book. This is a golden age Superman story. All right, to put every try to put everything in perspective here. And um, and the asking price that he wanted for it was four hundred something bucks. I'm like, I don't know about all that. So I leave the store. I immediately go on eBay and I find this for fifty bucks. And I'm like, okay, I could definitely do that, definitely. And that's including the cost of shipping. And um, you know, what? let me put this thing back in the uh, put this thing back in its bag and board. I'm going to bring this video to a grinding halt, and that is, I'm totally fine with that. But, um, like I said, uh, to continue the story, um, he mentioned how rare this book was and how a lot of people don't know about this book. And he talked to a guy who uh, lived relatively local to me, and or he just lived, you know, relatively uh, close to the area. And... Um, he has, I think he has the second largest Superman collection in the world. All right. 
And he didn't even know about this. He talked to him about the look mag this look magazine. He didn't even know about this. All right. So I I really don't think a lot of people know about this um about this, I don't want to call it book or magazine, but this particular Superman story. All right. And I really do believe that once uh people do know about it, the I mean just sky's the limit for this book you know i i looked on ebay a little while ago and uh there's still one i think for like 89 bucks or something like that i if i didn't have this i definitely would have jumped i definitely would jump on that you know because there's no telling for this book you know i think once more people really do find out about it all right so um, I'm sure there's some more notes and some more stuff that I can say about this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. And oh, and this pre, I mean, it, do you remember this that I picked up back in October? This is from 1942. That is from 1940. So this predates the Adventures of Superman novel by two years. Is that wow? You know, and I thought this was pretty uh, pretty old, but wow, you know. Okay. On to the regular haul. Let's move on to uh, Marvel Zombies number one. But yeah, man, I'm really, 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 really happy to have this. This is a great piece of just... If you're a Superman fan, even if you're not a big Superman fan, but you're into comics, th I would definitely uh, recommend you try to look for uh, Look Magazine, uh, February... 27th 1940 a golden age superman story because when uh, you know what i'm gonna talk about it some more fuck it uh, like when you think of um superman stories um at that time uh, when you think about it you have i think between action comics and uh that regular Superman title, I think there had only been like 30, less than 30 Superman issues, okay, between action and the Superman, and, super, and the actual, actual Superman uh, title, so, I mean, this is probably maybe, and I'm not counting the newspaper strips, but if you, I mean, I think this might be the, maybe the 30th Superman story, or something like, you know, less than the 30th Superman story, so, mm. Uh, definitely a great uh, little item to have. Okay, now we're moving on. Uh, Marvel Zombies number one. Um, I got this. I was able to pay. I paid like twenty bucks for it, um, including the cost of shipping. So I thought this was a relatively decent deal. Now, uh, I remember when this came out. I think back in 2005, when this first came out back in 2005, I saw it on the stands and I was just like, what the fuck? What is this shit? Come on. And I just passed it up. And then like a month later, it becomes a $30 book. It's written by uh, um, Robert Kirkman, who does, um, who of course does The Walking Dead. So, I mean, it's a natural fit. And Sean Phillips does the uh, artwork, and Arthur Sidem does Sidem does the uh, cover. So it's kind of like this. High, it was it was like the perfect storm, you know what I mean, for it to be such a um, for it to be such a relatively um, pricey book. All right, so uh, Marvel Zombies number one. Okay, let's keep moving. Deadpool versus Carnage number one. This is the uh, Linnell. Francis U variant. Uh, this cost me twenty bucks. The store that I usually get my pull list from, um, they reserved a copy for me. So I'm like, okay, cool, thank you. So I mean, you know, it probably goes for like twenty five now. And I mean, all, all the potential is there for the price to go up just because it's Deadpool and Carnage, you know, and, or the price could drop. Who knows? But I'm glad I have the. I, but I'm really glad. Because I have this really cool variant cover. It doesn't matter about the uh, the value of it going up or down. It really doesn't matter. If it goes up, thumbs up. If it doesn't, no no big deal. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Now, I have a few picks of the week. Obviously, Look, obviously look Magazine. Um, the second one has got to be Evil Ernie number one. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I remember a friend of mine. Uh, we were at a convention a few years ago, 
And for some reason, he was looking for this. And I'm like, what the, why do you want that? Come on. What's, uh, what's the big deal? And um, he just wanted it. And just recently, I started kind of wanting it myself. And I was at a store. I was at a store on a Monday. I saw him put it, he had a stack of new books and he, you know, put it away in the uh, long boxes. And I'm just like, eh, no big deal. I'll find it whenever. And then Friday comes, I'm just like, I got to get this book. So I raced over to the uh, comic book shop, hoping that, it's, ha hoping that it was there and it was still there. And it cost me 70 bucks. Well worth it. Nice high grade book. First appearance of Evil Ernesto. And uh, first appearance of Lady Death. So I can't complain. This is a great book to have. Uh, this is the Eternity. You see that? The Eternity. This is the, uh, I guess you could call it the first print. Now there's a Chaos Comics uh, reprint. You don't want that one. You want Eternity. Okay? But hell yeah. Hell's yeah. Okay. Now if this were a week ago, I would have been doing a hot book alert. But uh, not so much now. There was a lot of there's a lot of speculation about the storyline of the next Captain America movie. And um, a lot of that speculation turned towards the Captain America clone. And he was actually he's like a golden age character, the Captain America clone. But he kind of makes his reappearance in uh, this storyline here. And the I guess the climax of that storyline is uh, in Cap uh, number 156. And this book, I'm, a week ago, was going for 30 bucks. Uh, I was able to get this for 12, and look how bone white this thing is. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. Really, really, really beautiful. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know if the price has gone down or not, uh, but I'm still glad to have it. And here's uh, more of that storyline. Uh, number 155 I mean I got it for 10 bucks and look at the color on that the color is really deep hardly any uh, real spine stress so glad to have it and uh, 153 now this begins I believe this begins the storyline and it uh, begins the Steve Englehart the writer it begins his run on Captain America so um, a good book to have. I think I overpaid for it. It's called, I mean, it's in high grade, but it was like eh, it was like eighteen bucks. I'm just like, eh. I think I would have been more comfortable paying like probably fifteen or something like that. But eh, what are you gonna do? It's all good. Just don't. Just make sure I don't overpay all the time. You know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. Here we go with Adventure Comics number four twenty eight. Last week, I sh well, a couple of weeks ago, I showed off uh, the first appearance of Jonah Hex. Now, the co-creator of Jonah Hex uh, also created this character right here, Black Orchid. This book was really, really tough to find. The shops that I went to, I think I went to maybe, uh, I want to say six or seven shops before actually finding it and it was always gone it you see adventure number 427 and then number 429 so uh again tough book to find well at least for me personally it was a tough book to find but when i actually did find it i was like yeah, i will take it and it, it'll tie me over until i find a an even better i mean this is a really nice grade but I, but until I find an even higher grade copy, this will tie me over. This cost me like uh, fifteen bucks, so definitely worth it. And it's you know it's in a decent grade too, but I really would like a nice, really tight, sharp copy. All right, oh here we go with Incredible Hulk number two seventy two. This has the, I guess you could say the second appearance of rocket raccoon now you have the actual first appearance in the um or, or i don't it's all confusing but the first actual appearance of course is in marvel preview number seven then you kind of have the first appearance in comics in hulk 271 and i guess you could say this is the uh second or third or whatever appearance now it's almost like the hulk 
uh, 182, where Wolverine appears in like the for like in one panel on the first page, and that's it. And this is kind of the similar case where he's kind of in the first panel, kind of in the one panel on the first page, and that's it. But uh, this is that book. I found this in the dollar bin, by the way. And um, some and the price fluctuates. Um, you can get it for as low as five. You can get it for as high as twenty five. So, um, as it, like I said, I found it in the dollar bin. So, uh, hell yeah! And this is my second copy, by the way. I found another copy over the summer for like five bucks. All right. Oh, look at you! Look at you! You are so pretty. You are so pretty. I put a prom dress on you. You are so pretty. Ooh. Ooh. Avengers number 57. I have finally, brothers and sisters, finally found a copy of Avengers number 57 that I am satisfied with. Somebody say amen. Finally. Mm, look at this. Look at this high grade copy of the first appearance of Vision. Look at this. We got to go. We got to get closer. Air it extra dry. Mm, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look how deep the color is on this. Look at that sharp corners. So pretty. So beautiful. So nice. Look at you. Look at you. Mm, hell yeah. Hell yeah, baby. I mean, before this, I bought like two water damage copies. I bought last just last week. I bought a uh, a sun damage copy. I had to kiss a lot of frogs before I found a prince. I, let me tell you. So hell yeah, man. This is def this is my third pick of the week right here. I am so through. I finally have a copy that I I don't have to try. I, this cost me a hundred and ten dollars. All right. And I could easily double my money on this if I uh, so choose to. And as the um, uh, that the Avengers, the new, the next Avengers movie draws closer, I mean, sky's the limit for this one, you know. So hell yeah! Oh, look how beautiful that book is. Seriously, just look how gorgeous this book is. Oh, <laughs> hell's yeah, baby! Hell's yeah! All right, here we go with the next book uh, in honor of the Captain America movie that's out right now. Um, I figured I would show off a Captain America first appearance, oh, Captain America character first appearance. Um, this is the first appearance of Peggy Carter, um, Cap's love interest in the 1940s. Now, uh, She's shown in flashbacks, but a first appearance is a first appearance. So there you go. And I'm surprised that this and here's a book that I picked up last year, uh, Tales of Suspense. Did I say Tales to Astonish or Tales of Suspense? But this is Tales of Suspense, number 75, first appearance of Sharon Carter, Agent 13. I am really shocked at how these two books. I mean, you can probably get these two for like maybe less than 20 bucks. I am really surprised at how cheap these two uh, issues are. These are characters that are so ingrained in the uh, Captain America mythos that um, these should be worth way more than what they are. Um, this cost me 15 bucks. And I think I bought this last year for maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 or something like that. But I'm really surprised at how cheap and inexpensive these books are. And they should be worth way more than that. Okay, here we go with Harley Quinn, number four, the uh, robot chicken variant. Okay, now I bought this online for 22 bucks, including the cost of shipping. Yeah, no, no big deal. All right, okay, all right. Well, I go to the shop that I get my pull list from, and I see this on the table. For six dollars, I, I find another copy for six bucks. Can you believe that? Ain't that a rusty bitch? But of course, I snagged it up, and now I have two copies. Um, if I ever do decide to sell it, you know, I'll probably get my money back on it. So no, you know, it's all good. 
It's all kosher. All right. Oh, wow. Look at this. I'm really surprised by this one. Um, Detective Comics, number 469, first appearance of Dr. Phosphorus. I mean, this is one of those characters that uh, that could easily wind up on Arrow or something like that, you know, just because um, he's just like, such a kooky character. I think his uh, second, the, the cover to his second appearance looks a lot better. But hey, first appearance is a first appearance. I got, I think I got this for ten bucks. It's in VF shape. Um, I don't know. To me, it should be worth more just because it's such a cool. I don't know. He's like a really cool character, and I would love to see him uh, brought back on on some level. You know what I mean? So, yeah, really, just a really cool looking book. All right. Yeah, nothing more to say about it. Just stare at it some more. Okay. 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 Here we go with Daredevil number two. Um, uh, you know, this is the the second volume, the uh, Kevin Smith, Joe Quesada run from the late 90s. Now, this is, I believe this is the variant to number two. And, you know, a J. Scott Campbell cover, uh, female subject. I mean, this is one of those books that should be worth way more than the three dollars that I paid for it just because you know but I'm glad to have it you know there's like blunting right there and right there so I would like to upgrade at some point but I'm happy with this one for the time being so yeah all right it's all good it's kosher all right let's keep moving oh the walking dead number 75 uh San Diego comic-con exclusive um this this book is thick like if if I wanted to kill somebody with this, I probably could with how like thick and heavy this thing is. And um I don't know, nothing really to say about it. Uh I think it goes for 20. I paid 15 for it, you know. No big deal. And towards the back, you have um this came out in 2010 and I believe The Walking Dead act TV show came out in 2010 and it has kind of like a little um like it has photos of the characters uh, from the TV show. So you could say, since people are trying to pull first appearances out of their ass, you could say this is the first appearance of the live action Walking Dead cast. All right, there you go. All right, and last but not least, we go with, let's go with Iron Man number 282. This is my second copy. Uh, now, this one is the first appearance of War Machine. I bought my first copy uh, like a couple of years ago during the summer. And I, this book had been in the lo in the long box of the store that I got it from for like I'm talking weeks, and I've been and I was like so surprised at how and it was only eight bucks like it had an eight dollar price tag on it and I was so surprised at the people that just pass it up you know what I mean and I'm just like you know what and I went to the store and I'm like if I don't find anything at the store to buy I'll buy this and sure enough I did. And I'm glad because this book is in nice high grade and I could probably easy, easily get 20 bucks for it if I ever uh, decide to choose. If I ever decide to choose to <laughs> sell it, that didn't sound right, but you get what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, a uh, really cool couple of weeks of um, just finding, found a grail of mine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hell Yeah found a really cool book that I didn't even know I was didn't even know I wanted so yeah fun week and uh I'll go see Captain America at some point in time I might see it this weekend might see it next weekend I'll get around to it but thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time all right